Now, if you need to remove a white background in Photoshop, there's a variety of really easy ways to do so, including if you have complicated cutouts such as hair that you need to remove the white background from. Now, in this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through all of the best ways to remove a white background, whether you're working with simple graphics or more complicated cutouts. Now, the images that we're gonna work with here today in Photoshop is we have this gentleman right here against the simple white background. Then we have our two graphic images here, and then we will have our final image, which is going to be cutting out this white background and then cutting out all of this hair as well. Now, this is the last example that we're going to cover. So make sure to stick around as you're going to learn a ton of useful stuff in this example. Now, anyways, to start things off, we're going to begin with this image here. Now, the beauty of this photo is that it's going to be really easy to remove the background from because we don't have any space between his arms. It's just Everything is together because his arms are crossed. It's easy to cut out and things like that. Now in Photoshop CC 2020 and newer, there is a little button called remove background. Now, if you're not using Photoshop 2020 or newer, the other methods will apply to you. But this particular method, I just had to add in because it's just so good. You can't really not use it. So to do this remove background method with your image layer selected, go up to your properties panel right up here. Now, if you don't see the properties panel, just simply go to window and then down here to properties and that will bring this up for you. Now making sure that your layer is unlocked. If it is locked like this, just simply click on the lock icon to unlock it. Then you're going to go into your properties panel and then go down to your quick actions. And here you see your remove background and select subject. Now the select subject button will create an active selection around your subject, whereas the remove background will create a selection add it to a layer mask and then remove the background for you. So it just provides a more streamlined process for removing the background if that's what you plan on doing anyways. So since I want to remove this white background, I'll just simply click on remove background. Photoshop will work its magic and check out what happens here. Now the white background has been removed, a layer mask has been created around our subject, and everything looks really good. That was literally one click, no manual settings needed, just one button, and that's why I was saying it's so good that you have to take advantage of it if you're using Photoshop 2020 or newer. So that's the remove background button, it works amazing for removing white backgrounds, as well as other simple cutouts that you might be doing in Photoshop. So now let's go to our next example, which is this logo here. So now we're working with a graphic and we just have a solid colored white background. Now, if you have a logo of your own or you're designing something, you will often have a white background against your graphic. So to remove it really quickly, I like to use the magic wand tool. Now to select the magic wand tool, it's going to be within the quick selection tool, if this is what you see. So just click and hold on there and then go to magic wand tool. Now in the upper settings bar, what I like to do is set my sample size to point sample or five by five average, either or, but for a white background, usually a point sample will do the job for you. Now as for the tolerance, if you have any white in your logo or shades of gray, then I would make sure that this tolerance is under 20. But if you do not have any white in your logo, as I have here, then the tolerance amount doesn't really matter as much because there's such a big difference between the white and then the color of your logo. So Photoshop is an easy time telling the difference between the two areas. Then make sure that anti-alias is checked off and then also make sure that contiguous is checked off. So what contiguous does is that it makes sure that Photoshop only selects pixels that are connected to one another. So for example, it will select all of the white pixels that are connected in your background, but then if you had some white in your logo, it wouldn't jump over to that white as well because it's not directly connected to the white pixels in your background. Now I highlight all of these magic wand tool settings in another tutorial that you can find up in the corner right now. But with these basic settings, it's enough to just remove a white background. So with your image layer selected, simply click on the white background. You'll now have an active selection selecting your background. Then with that image layer selected, go ahead and add a layer mask. With the layer mask selected, just press Command or Control I. And then now you have successfully removed your background non-destructively because we've added that selection onto a layer mask and it's really that easy. So now let's move on to method number three. Now in this photo, we have two graphics once again, but this time we have something a little bit different. As you can see, we have some sort of off white colors that are going to throw off the tool that we're going to use. So the tool that we're gonna use for this example is the magic eraser tool. So just go to your eraser tool and then click and hold and go to a magic eraser tool. 
Now what the magic eraser tool does is basically samples a color, finds similar colors to that one, and then just deletes it from your image. Now this tool does not work non-destructively since it permanently deletes your background, but if you know for sure that you do not want anything to do with that white background, then this is a fine method to use if you would like. Now up here in the settings bar, I have a few settings checked off right now. I'm actually gonna uncheck contiguous just to show you an example here. Now if I go and click on the background right now, Notice how it deleted a lot of the sort of gray colors that were in the windmill blades. It deleted out of the window and then it also removed all the color inside of this duck. And I didn't want that to happen. I only wanted the white background to be removed, but I wanted these graphics to stay exactly the same and retain all of the color that was initially in them. So I'll press Command or Control Z to undo that and let's try this one more time. Now this time I'm gonna check off contiguous and this works the exact same way as it did with the magic wand tool. It's only gonna select colors related to your sample that are connected to one another. So when I click on the background this time, notice how the white in my windmill does not get removed and neither does the white in my duck. And that is because the white background or the white color pixels in the background are not connected to these white pixels because there are these dark pixels around the duck and then there's all obviously all these red pixels blocking this other white area. So that's why the contiguous option is so helpful when you're removing a white background. Now the problem here that you can see is that we obviously still have some of the gray windmill blades that were removed. So let's press Command and Control Z to undo that. And now we're gonna go and adjust the tolerance. Now the reason that I'm showing you all of these things is so you actually understand what these settings do so then you can have a better time troubleshooting things if you run into problems while you're trying to remove a white background. So since I I was selecting these sort of darker white tones. That means my tolerance is set too high. So I'm gonna set this down to something like 10. So now Photoshop will be a lot more picky with what pixels it's going to select. And now I'll click on that white background again and notice how all of the windmill blades were left alone because those colors or these white colors here were too different than the color of the white background that we sampled with the magic eraser tool. So the magic eraser tool works really well for deleting the background from a graphic, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for removing the background from a person as much just because it permanently deletes the background and you don't have any layer mask to work with afterwards. Now really quickly, if you're enjoying these methods that you've learned so far, make sure to hit that like button down below as it really makes a huge difference to support this video and support this channel. Thank you so much, let's get back into it. So now that we've covered three main methods of removing white backgrounds in Photoshop, let's move on to our final and my favorite method of doing things, and this will cover how to remove some more complicated edges, which in this case is her hair. So. With the tools that we've covered so far, if we use the background eraser tool, for example, I could click and press delete. Notice how there's a whole bunch of leftover areas. So it just doesn't do a very good job. Press command and control Z to undo that. So that's not gonna do the trick for us. If I go to my magic wand tool, I'll click on there once again. And as you can see, it's still missing a lot of the hair and things like that. It's not really getting on the strands of the hair and it would just leave us with more work than we actually want to deal with. And then the final option that you would have that we've covered so far is remove background but as you can see here it's sort of deleted a lot of her hair it's made her shoulder look a bit weird and it's just kind of, it didn't really do the best job and it didn't retain a lot of the information around the hair especially if we went and created a new layer underneath filled it with black like so you can see that things just aren't looking exactly how we were hoping. So I wanna show you a better way for when you're dealing with complicated edges like this, and that is with channels. So I'm gonna right click on that, delete this layer mask so we're starting fresh. So with that image layer selected, I'm gonna go over to my channels tab here. Now if you don't see the channels, just simply go to window, and down here to channels, and that will open it up for you. Now within these channels, you have a variety of different color channels known as RGB or red, green, blue, and these are what make up all the colors in your photo. Let me just make these thumbnails a little larger so it's easier to see here. Now within each color channel, there is varying levels of contrast. If I click on each one, you can notice how there's sort of different contrast between each color channel, and this will vary depending on the colors in your image. Now the reason that this blue channel has more contrast than the green or red is simply because there's more blue tones in the photo. Now the reason that all of this contrast is so valuable is that we can use it to create a selection around our subject. So the first goal that you need to do is make sure that you locate the color channel with the most contrast. In this case, that is the blue channel by a long shot. As you can see, the red channel is kind of bright, the 
green channel is okay, but then the blue channel is much darker than all of them. So once you've identified that contrasty channel, we're gonna duplicate it. So just click and drag down to the new layer icon, and that's gonna create a blue copy. Now we need to basically make this image black and white so Photoshop can create a selection of it really easily. By pressing Command or Control L with that channel copy selected, we'll bring up the Levels dialog box. And what we can do here is bring up the shadows and bring up the highlights to basically add a ton of contrast into our photo to ideally make our subject completely black and our background completely white. Now when you're removing hair though, here's a tricky thing that you'll deal with. If I continue to move this slider up, brightening the highlights, you can see how the hair kind of looks pixelated and broken and it doesn't look very nice. Whereas if I bring this back a little bit, it retains a lot more information in there. There's a lot more hair that is left over that gets lost as you increase those highlights. So the goal is to not overdo it. You wanna have something where you can still see all the detail in the hair or the complicated edge that you're working with and just find a balance that works essentially here. So in this case, Right around here seems to be okay for me. The background is relatively white and our subject is as dark as it can be. Now, obviously this is a long shot from totally black and totally white. So I'm gonna click okay and we're gonna use something called the brush overlay to help finalize this look. So with my blue copy channel selected, I'm gonna press a B to access my brush tool. And then in the mode option, I'm gonna set this to overlay. With my foreground color set to black, what I'm gonna do is go and paint over all of the hair here. And what this will do is only darken the gray or black tones. So anything that was almost black will now become fully black, but the white pixels will not be affected. So I'm gonna just continue along here, making sure to select all of the hair really nicely. And you don't have to worry too much about these gray pixels coming around her hair because we'll be able to get rid of those really quickly in a moment here. So I'm gonna then just go and fill in the rest of my subject like so. So now that the hair looks pretty good, I'm gonna now change my foreground color to white, as you can see here. And now we're gonna go and paint around the background here like so. And notice how all of that hair is left totally untouched but the white background gets removed. So that is kind of what we're going for here. I'm gonna just use a softer brush like so, and then now it's gonna nicely get rid of the white background for us, all those gray pixels. You can continue to paint along the background like this, just to get rid of all of those gray pixels. And then for any problem areas that may be left over still within your subject, simply change your brush overlay back to normal, and then we'll switch our foreground color to black, and then I'll just go and paint over those white areas just to make sure that they're all selected on my subject here. So now you can see my background is completely white and my subject is completely black. So now we can create a selection from this. So holding command or control and clicking on your layer thumbnail, that will turn this into a selection for us. Going back to our layers panel, we'll make sure that our image layer is selected. Then we're gonna go and add a layer mask like so. And then since it's the opposite of what we want, we'll make sure that layer mask is selected and press command or control I to invert that mask. And now we have removed the white background from our person. Now this might look okay at first because it's against a white background still, but if I go and turn on this black background, you can see that things just aren't really looking good. There's a lot of fringing left over. So luckily we can quickly refine this in our select and mask option. So double clicking on the layer mask like so, we're gonna make sure that the refine edge brush tool is selected here. And then we're gonna check off smart radius. And then we're gonna go and just paint along the edges of her hair like this. And Photoshop does an amazing job to remove that fringing and make the hair look realistic once again. You might have to go over some parts of your subject a couple times, but it ends up doing a really good job just to refine those pieces of hair and make things look realistic once again. So then you can put this cutout onto a different background with ease. Now, in this case, I have a big chunk of white in her hair, and that's actually just the highlight left over from the original photo, so I'm not going to touch that one in this case. So now that looks pretty good to me there. And now just to finish things off, if you would like, you can even go ahead and just press decontaminate colors. And this can often do a nice job just to basically refine some of that hair a little bit more. 
and then we'll set the output to new layer with layer mask and click OK. So now I have a new layer created with all of our updated adjustments. And if I turn on my underlying layer, you can see the huge difference that that has made to refine our hair. So then after turning it off that black background, we have a really nice cutout of our subject and all of her hair just by using the channels method with the brush tool in the overlay blend mode. So with these four easy techniques for removing a white background in Photoshop, you can quickly remove these backgrounds, whether you're cutting out a person or just a simple graphic. Now the tools that we covered today were the remove background tool, which is of course only available in Photoshop 2020 and newer. Then we covered the magic wand tool, which is great for removing single colors from an image. For example, a white background like we covered in this video. Then we covered the magic eraser tool, which works best for graphics since it removes backgrounds destructively by deleting the pixels permanently. So I wouldn't recommend using that with any person that you're cutting out, but it does work well for graphics like you learned in the examples that we went through. And then finally, the channels option works really well for removing white background since it uses contrast to create a selection and then cut out your image. And since the white background is gonna be way brighter than whatever your subject is, the channels often works really well for cutting out your photo and it works especially well for cutting out complicated edges like we did with this hair example. So now if you enjoyed today's tutorial, make sure to hit that like button down below as it really makes a huge difference and really supports this channel. And if you're new around here and you love Photoshop, photo editing, and all of that good stuff, hit that subscribe button down below so we can hang out and talk more about photo editing together. Anyways, my name's Brandon from BeWillCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.